Okay, I figured that I will make a video of the procedures, you know, of how to deal with a Robo 3D printer. Now, I just finished pr a print of this object, which you'll actually see in another video. Um, you know, it just uh, now got finished. That took, uh, I guess, about 30 minutes, kind of more or less what it said it would take. Um, um, and... I'm going to show you the procedure, you know, of how to get the part off. Now, the bed is already cold because it's, it's print's finished, uh, you know, 10 or ten minutes or so ago. Um, <clears throat> but, um, you know, it's better to let the bed cool. It's easier to get it off when the bed's cool than when it's hot. Because, again, you know, I use the Aquanet, and you'll see that because I'm going to cue this thing up for the next part here in a few minutes. Um... Generally speaking, you take this little scraper, which the Robo 3D gives you, and you just start tapping on it lightly. Lightly tap on it. You know, this is actually a delicate part. This version is this is two layers thick right here. This this part that I'm pointing my finger at right through here, it's only two layers thick. It's very delicate <clears throat> compared to most things you might 3D print. But you just it's actually only one layer thicker than this little thing I'm pulling off right now. This little test man or whatever they do with the ball, whatever they call it. And that's got it. So that's the, the released part. Now after you're done with that I keep some water here <clears throat> and some paper towels handy. So it's a good idea before in fact before I get into that though, see these little knots here? That's where the thing was leveling itself, you know, because it does like a nine point level. You can see these little dots here. You should always make sure to scrape those off. <clears throat> when you're done with a print because that can because <clears throat> if you don't do that and you try to do print another part well it's going to try to auto level the bed with these knots in the way and it's going to throw its accuracy off so you got to make sure to remove those things every time if you don't <clears throat> it's going to screw you up in fact there's a, another little tip you're going to have to see here in a minute on the second part of this video but definitely you know scrape your your bed off anything you might you know you know, you can kind of pull this thing out by hand if you want. <clears throat> but anything that, you know, you might want to, you know, the scum and everything else that's remaining, blow it off, you know, and then take your little paper towel, get you some water in it, and just kind of clean it off. That's a good thing about hairspray. It cleans off real easy. So you just clean it off, and you know, get it nice and clean, which sometimes... Sometimes, like this last part I just printed, I actually didn't clean it off. Sometimes I don't. I did scrape the little nodules off, but I didn't actually clean the bed with water. I just, because uh, see, I printed this exact same part before, but I wanted to print it again to make it a little thicker. So, um, I, I just sprayed, you know, hairsprayed just that same area and didn't bother cleaning it. So you don't always have to clean it. Just It just depends on your personal preference and what kind of surface finish you're going to get up, you know, um, end up with and like I said just apply a little hairspray and that's the key anyway the point is is that right now um, I'm going to go ahead and and turn this thing on so it starts preheating the bed and I'll get my next part set up and I'll, I'll take you through that process and show you when to apply the hairspray so let's do that then okay I probably ought to take you out of flower mode like I said, again I call this flower mode on this camera because you know, when you put it in flower mode, a little flower shows up, and that's for close-ups. Okay, this is the part I just completed right here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and try to print these discs next. So, let me bring that up. So, that's what we're going to print. It's actually four items, or five items, rather. Um, let me go to layer view. Okay, and I, it, you know, I've already generated this before, so it automatically did that. So, you can kind of see, if I go and grab this little layer pointer, you know, what the di different layers are going to print on this. There's a total of 244 layers. 
it says it'll take an hour and 39 minutes if you can see that um, so I'm gonna go ahead and go into the advanced controls and again this is uh, this is version 1.21 of this uh, matter hackers thing and again I still use this software I mean it still seems okay to me I mean it's again if I got into advanced tinkering and again I haven't done that with this this uh, 3d printer yet you know trying to you know trying to get into the you know the advanced uh, settings and so forth how the hell do I get out of this oh um, you know but like I said you know you got a lot of configuration settings you can go through on this I mean um, and you know, a lot of ways to tw tweak this to make this much much more precise uh, of a printer and I just haven't got into that yet um, so you know but I know a lot of these things can can be adjusted the infill speed you know layers parameters you know I've adjusted these a little bit as far as my infill um, but at any rate um, the point is is that um, you know the software has done okay for me you know I said I'm printing this on medium quality right now high quality does produce a little better results in terms of accuracy but um, but for what I'm doing right now I mean you see um, um, you know this is this is fine so uh, but let me go ahead and get this thing heated up here if I can figure out where that is I'm still trying to get used to the software they keep changing the damn interface you know every time this is like the third or fourth version of the software they change the interface around every time they come with a new model so it gets confusing um, but you know what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm going ahead and preheating it and it'll do it automatically if you hit print you know it'll actually preheat itself but I don't recommend doing it this way and I'll show you why because like I said I kinda like to have better control of things now right here is the bed temperature and it's up to 31 degrees when it hits 50 which is its target um, you know you can see what the target temperature is here and what the actual temperature is here when it hits 50 you know our bed should be dry from the water I had I, I just cleaned the bed off and that's when it's time to put hairspray on it they, they do recommend that you know when the beds up to temperature that's the best time to apply hairspray and you want to give it a couple of minutes to evaporate off when you apply it um, see the uh, head temperature is the block temperature is still not up to uh, temp you know its target is 210 degrees centigrade um, it's only 126 right now but like I said our bed temperature is practically there in fact that's good enough you can actually apply hairspray at this point if it's dry yet again I don't always clean my bed off uh, um, and it's always a good pr practice too when you're done printing for the day to go ahead and clean the bed off so it's ready to go the next day so you don't have to mess with it and, you know so the water will evaporate off and everything you know it's best to clean up when you're done with printing for the day but yeah we can go ahead and start messing with the hairspray now um, like I said you can see the the bed you know it's got some streaks on it because of the water and the gunk on it because it doesn't have to be per perfectly clean this this bed supposedly is detachable but it's also heated uh, in theory you could take it and wash it in the sink but you know you'd have to disconnect it and everything so I don't really recommend that um, let me put my lid back on my cool whip water um, okay now when I take hairspray I'm, I'm since I'm kind of operating the camera here it's difficult for me to do I need one of those cameras like fucking survivor man uses um, so I can you know um, do this kind of single handedly here but normally what I do you know is I take a piece of paper and hold it like this so the spray just doesn't get anywhere I mean everywhere I mean it's probably not a big deal so for right now I'm just going to do it without the paper but normally I hold that paper in there as a shield that's what they recommend on the robo video anyway I'm going to spray the bed and you know this is going to be a pretty big print so I'm going to spray the whole thing you can see how I'm spraying that's all the hairspray you need don't get carried away with it um, it does make a nice aroma in your place so I kind of <laughs> it makes it smell cleaner than it really does um, so I kind of look forward to doing 3D printing but you, you see the hairspray kind of evaporating off there and let me put it back in fire mode um, damn it the switch is going to wear out one of these days but you, well I, I, I guess it's all evaporated off now so you can't see anything but you know the the hairspray takes a few minutes to print now you can see the you know the the 3d printer you can see how it's oozing right now so that's the other reason I don't like like to just get carried away you need to remove that uh, before you start a print 
So, um, okay, my camera ran out of these. Um, and like I said, you know, this is the, um, you know, this is, you know, how you basically set up one of these things for print. You know, you, um, you just go through that procedure again in reverse order, but you go through that procedure and, you know, it gets you done. Um, like I said, if you're using Cure Engine though, you know, what would happen, you know, is that it would look like I have a clogged nozzle. It would be tracing things out and, and nothing would be coming out, but the gears would still be turning. But it was, you'd think you, your nozzle was clogged. It's just because the thing's actually trying to print too close to the bed. Nothing can come out. So what happens is, it actually choose a hole, that neural button, bolt in there, you know, choose a hole on the side of the filament so nothing more can come out because it's trying to extrude it, but there's too much back pressure, uh, so nothing can extrude out of it. It's just they don't have it set right out of the box. I don't know who's responsible for that, Robo 3D or Matter Hackers or somebody, but the fact of the matter is, you know, is that somebody ought to fix that so the cure engine will, will work right out of the damn box. You know, I haven't gotten to tweaking it. I did make a video on that, you know, and I might go ahead and publish that video on YouTube, but I, I, I never resolved the issue, so that's why I hadn't put the video out there yet, but I might do that as like a two-part video. And one of these days I'll probably figure out how to fix that damn cure engine, you know, but just not right now. I'm busy with this stuff. So, um... Anyway, that still covers the basics of how to, you know, um, set the your prints up and how to, um, you know, pull your prints off when they're done. You know, so I just thought that would be interesting for you if you're want, wanting to know what's involved in actually creating a print, you know, and how to set it up and take it down. I thought it would be useful information, especially if you're new to 3D printing. Because um, that's what I love about this printer. It's all, you know, there's really no calibration, you know. Everything I did is all you have to do. That's what I love about it, the auto bed leveling. It works like a charm, but there are a couple of caveats. you got to make sure you get those little buggers off, <laughs> you know, when you're done with your print. And make sure you get that one in the middle off if you're going to print a part in the middle like I do here, this square. You know, again, I could arrange my parts so it just doesn't print where that little booger in the middle comes out. But that's always the biggest one. you always got to remove that. Um, but again, if you're printing a big part, you wouldn't have a choice. I mean, you'd have to print where the burger, burger is. So it's just, I usually just do it the way I'm, I'm talking about, and, and you know, I just have to remove the booger. One of these days, I'll probably, you know, get used to this thing enough where I'll just not print on, you know, have my parts on the booger, but I always forget. Um, but at any rate, you know, that's how to do it, and um, I hope you found this video useful.